Well, good afternoon and welcome back to Truth Worth Living, where we seek to understand God's Word so we can live in God's will. Now, we're, we're going to go a little bit different direction today as I want to take some time to discuss an important event that's coming up next week that we as the body of Christ need to come together on. It has scary implications and potential even for division, and I think we need to be sure that we understand what God says about it. And you, you know what it is, right? It's Halloween, of course. All the ghosts and the goblins, the tricks and the treats, it, it's, it's all very terrifying. I'm actually not talking about Halloween. I'm talking about the presidential election. Every four years, we hear the same exact thing. This is the most important election in American history. And I, I remember when, when I was in fourth grade at Wahala Elementary School, this kid named David was saying that if Ronald Reagan won, he was going to move to Canada. And of course, some smart aleck said, we'll help you pack. But I'm sure he thought and his parents thought it was the most important election in history. The truth is they're all important and people get a little skittish, a little out of kilter as those elections are unfolding in real time. Now, I don't know if this election is the most important or not, but what I do know is that the stakes are high and you can just feel it, right? People are on edge. Anxiety is through the roof. And I feel pretty confident that rather than recognizing this anxiety as an opportunity for us to let our light shine, we in the body of Christ are not only contributing to it, but we're being swept up in the madness. That, that shouldn't happen. This is our time to shine, but we've gone dark. Darkness, that darkness, is a byproduct of losing sight of the truth. So what's true? What political parties and their candidates lack in wisdom, God possesses through omniscience. Where they're suspect in their motivations, God is pure and righteous and wants what's best for us. Where they err in policy, God's word is infallible. And where their strength fails, God is omnipotent. When politicians compromise and waffle, God is steady and unwavering. They may talk about controlling the weather, but God and only God can calm the storm. They promise to fight off disease, but only God can heal it. Where politicians fail us, and they will, God is always faithful. As we sing, great is his faithfulness. Now, that, that's true. It's all truth, and we know it. Yet, we act like our only hope is found in our preferred candidate. But the scripture says we must not go there. Psalm 146, verses 3 and 4 says this, Do not put your trust in princes, in human beings who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. These candidates, they cannot save us, our hopes, our dreams, and even our nation. They are not gods. They are people who are destined to, for the grave, who will ultimately answer to God. And when they go, their best laid plans for solving all of our problems go with them. No national leader, no nation is worthy of that kind of trust. In Psalm 20, King David, the king, made this observation. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we, the people of God, trust in the name of the Lord our God. Now, for some in his day, it was military might, power, that won their trust. For some in ours, it's parties and presidents. But in the body of Christ, we trust in the name of the Lord our God. Now, the question for us is, as we approach the election, is how do we demonstrate that trust? We don't bow out. Okay, trusting in God doesn't preclude our participation in politics. It determines it. We, we vote because God has blessed us to live in America, and part of that blessing is that we live in a system where we can make our voices heard. Our votes count. 
So as good stewards of the opportunity that God has graced us with, we must exercise our right to vote with wisdom by becoming informed about the people and their platforms. Trusting in the name of the Lord our God influences how we act and vote before the election, but it also influences how we respond after the election. And this may be the most important part. No matter who takes control of the White House, we know who sits on the throne. So come what may, we aren't going to lose our minds, we certainly aren't going to lose our religion, and we aren't going to lose sight of our mission. We're going to love God and people, all people, serving the cause of our king, regardless of who happens to be our president. Our king is in control, and our hope is in him. That's why we pray for, prioritize, and serve his kingdom, that it may come on earth just as it is in heaven. Now, that's the truth we live by, and this is truth worth living. Thank you so much for joining me today. My prayer for you is that God will give you peace, that God will give you the ability to see and recognize where he's inviting you to bring the peace we have in Jesus to those who are so skittish and filled with anxiety regarding this election. Thank you for joining me. Have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow night as we turn to God's Word.